For 13 seasons, Ted Ginn Jr. has had a home in the NFL. This Ted. Considering where he came from, it really isn't a surprise. You know, my father is one of a kind. For years, you know, he always been that guy to find his way on to any football field. Good there. How are your folks doing? They're good, good. My pop's here. Oh, is he? Yeah, he's somewhere over there. He's okay. Somewhere. All right. You see the old man? What? Yeah, he's yeah, he right there. Football runs deep in the Ginn family. Ted Ginn Sr. has been coaching at Glenville High School in Cleveland for over 40 years. When he sit down, it should be gone. There you go. I use football as an opportunity to engage uh, and to, to constantly be able to raise a child, you know, give them all the core values of life, trying to keep them out of the way. This is what it's about. Football, man, to me, can make you or destroy you. And I've seen a lot of people in this game. It makes them, and I've seen a lot of people get destroyed. Play fundamental football and forget your ego! Ted Sr. has always expected the most out of the football players in his life. The one living at home was no exception. Ted was about eight or nine, maybe. He used to always wait for me, and we'll go outside in the front yard, and he would get out there wide out. I would throw it to him. I say, if you drop the ball, I'm going in. We go out there and catch 100 balls. But if you drop three, I'm done. No matter what. Like, I don't care if you, you got to die for it. If it touch your hands and I call it a drop, we're done. So I just try to go out there and just not drop no ball so I could play with my dad. The son of a coach excelled in both football and track. You know, sometimes when you're a father and, uh, and your son is, is the athlete, they think you just beat him down. We didn't talk about football at the house. We might study and we might study track, but that's it. We have fun, you know, just designing plays. Like, we both were excited about it. Like, you know, I was a, like a player coach out there already because I was, I've been in the system since I was three. After leaving Glenville, in junior, starred at Ohio State and was drafted 10th overall by the Miami Dolphins. Nearly two dozen of Ted Sr.'s former players have made it to the NFL, including Ted Jr.'s teammates, Marshawn Lattimore and Justin Hardy. It always leads back to this, where I'm at right now, where I'm sitting right now, is uh, try to just make that, try to be that example for the next one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we used to tell them, y'all the example for hope for everybody else. And we just constantly just kept working like that because the next kids saw that, make them want to work. Ted Jr. is no stranger to work. Good job, Dad. He had to work hard to shed the label of job, bust after being traded just three seasons into his career and having his role reduced primarily to return specialist. That goes back to being a coach's son. You know, just understanding your role, understanding what you is. I knew that my team knew in San Francisco, you know, we have a 50-50 chance that this guy's gonna take it to the house. And Ginn is gone! Touchdown, 49ers! Teddy, baby, nice job! Nice job, Teddy! Some people don't even find comfort in their own self to be able to accept their role, so that's why they're miserable, and they say, oh, I, I don't understand it. In that time, and what we all fighting for, and that's a Super Bowl, you do what's best for the team. Game ball! Teddy Ginn! Yeah! Seven years ago, the father and son made the trip to New Orleans for Super Bowl 47, but it nearly didn't happen. I got a phone call one day from my cousin, Kamisha, and she told me, she said, I think you need to come on home. I said, what? I said, I think you need to come on home. It don't look too good for him. Ted Sr. had been hospitalized for over two months while fighting pancreatic cancer when his son arrived. I just came out of a coma because they was saying I wasn't going to make it. And I woke up and he was there. The doctor was like, who is that guy over there? You know, my dad looked up and was like, hm, it's my son. And I, I guess I was telling on everybody that was there how they treated me to him. But I remember that, that, that was one of the 
The best moments for me, a doctor couldn't have did nothing for me that day, just to see him. In 2015, Ted Jr. helped lead the Panthers to Super Bowl 50. I want to recognize one guy because the things that he did kept this game in position for us. Where's Ted again? Yeah. That was huge because I think that in the NFL, you know how it go, man. You know, you got to fight everybody, you know, or who you are. You got analyzers, you got all that. But I know my son deep down inside, and he, I know how he cares. All right. The 2019 Saints may be Ted Jr.'s last opportunity to capture his first championship. Everybody think, well, he, he don't have but one year left. Well, he was, he was a bust from the beginning out, and he's still there. I don't know bust to stay 13 years. I just hope that God continue to bless him to keep him in the lead because he's a gem. Uh, keep pressing, keep pressing. Yeah. No matter how much longer Ted Jr. plays, Ted Sr.'s influence on the NFL will continue as long as any of his kids are in the league. For him to go to New Orleans and see three of his kids, it just give him a joy because you know, you know, he says he's on extra time now. We can't be where we at right now if it wasn't for him and the people that he had around him. These pictures go way back. These trophies is from everybody. This is a community. It's just not no uh, one-man team.